So I hope all of you stoners all over the world <coughs> are preparing for 420. And have organised to have the day off work so that you can attend a gathering near you or travel if necessary or if you're in an area where you feel there's enough people and there isn't a gathering organizing one at the last minute that's a lot of fun you've got five days but it's important this year to get out to get your boots on the ground to get your voice heard let it ring out with all those voices around you all around the world or sorry flat earthers for the length of the plateau um, <clears throat> it's important that we're all out there demanding the end of prohibition the harm that has gone on and on and on and on must end and that will only be so if people come out and say so that's that's all it comes down to and keep in mind you don't have to support the use of cannabis to support the end of the prohibition and the harm that it causes there are other ways of regulating the use of cannabis if you're not if you're not someone that supports it you know prohibition is not effective and it's very very harmful the first step towards moving forwards is ending prohibition the regulations, all of the other the bits and the pieces, that can be worked out in time. Uruguay showed that. They didn't bother putting in regulations and so forth. They just said, look, you can grow up to six plants. You can have this much. You can even buy from the government supply this much and it'll cost you this much per gram. That's all they did. They allowed then some time for things to stabilise and for the black market to lose the income for a few years and then allowing that gap now all these years later in the last couple of years they've started introducing regulations for people to set up the retailer side of it but the first step was taking the harm away from the people that were actually using it taking away the harms that prohibition is bringing the end user in many cases the patient because let's let's be honest here a lot of people are accessing cannabis for a lot of different reasons these days. It's not like back in the Cheech and Chong, let's sit around, have a bong. This is more a well thought out approach to something to do with their health, their diet. There are many, many reasons that people find themselves seeking access to cannabis. And that realization has come on par with the understanding and the education that the harms that we were all led to believe were in fact false. That there was no fact to them. That there was no science to back up these claims. So now's the time when people need to just stand up and say, well look, we, know, we, we understand the truth now. Let's, let's not worry right now about who made the decisions and the reasons they made it and the fraud that may have been involved. Let's not focus on that right now. We can get to that later. What we have to focus on right now is just ending the harm. And that means ending prohibition, ending an approach that was always intended to harm and never, ever, ever had a hope of winning. Look at the lesson that was learned with alcohol when they tried to prohibit it. Look what this lesson that's been learned with, with cannabis. Let's be honest here, over $11 billion spent on cannabis alone here in Australia on a yearly basis. And that's a low ball figure. That's a lot of money that's in the hands of criminal organisations. That's a lot of cash. That's the result of prohibition. Prohibition doesn't introduce control over a substance. It introduces opportunities for criminals to make money. It introduces forms of harm upon the populace who are the end users of the thing that's being prohibited. And as I said, in many cases, these are patients or parents of vulnerable children who require the simple plant, that natural remedy for a condition that otherwise will have complete sort of like control over their lives. Many forms of epilepsy can only be treated with cannabis. 99.9% .9 forms 
of epilepsy can be effectively treated with cannabis. Okay, this, let's get the thing. It's very, very few and far between forms of epilepsy that can't be treated with cannabis. One or two, or a limited number, can only be treated with cannabis. But cannabis is the only truly effective treatment. And it's not like, oh, it's got to go through processing and all this, that and the other. Mate, it, it, a kid could just chew on some natural bud and the oils excreted from that bud into their mouth would, you know what I mean? In its natural form. Not costing thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars a month for treatment. Something that can be as handful of seeds out in a backyard. You know, something that you grow so you know what's going into it, so you know there's no harmful pos you know, t toxins, pesticides, fungicides, all of that kind of thing. You can not use those, and then you know what's going into it, and then it's a completely safe sort of natural substance, and then you can present that. You can actually extract the oil, condense it down yourself at home safely. There's no need for these big pharmaceutical companies to be getting involved in what essentially is a very natural and safe remedy for many conditions. So please, in five days' time, it is April 20. All around the world, we need people getting out, coming together and speaking with one voice to end the harm, end prohibition. Take the harm away from the people. That's all that we have to ask for. We can move forwards from then. But let's just start with the first important thing. Let's end the harm. Let's worry about the regulations of supply later. Let's just end the harm. Let's focus on something that's within our grasp because we can end the harm. We can end prohibition because prohibition is merely words upon paper. Words that can be erased. Has nobody heard of whiteout? That's all we have to... We can't let them muddy the waters... We can't let them get it all confusing. Let's make it really, really simple. All we want right now is the end of prohibition. Let's take the criminal penalties away. There's no need for them. There's no reason for them. Let's take the criminal penalties away for use, for possession and for growing small amounts. Let's just do that. Everything else can be worked out later. We know that giving people the ability to do something at home does not preclude businesses making billions of dollars. Otherwise, distillery companies and beer companies wouldn't be so big and rich because people can brew their own beer and make their own spirits at home. And yet, they go to bottle shops. And yet, they go to hotels. And yet, they go to nightclubs to purchase these things. Why? Because that's just part of life. Having the ability to do something at home will not stop industries moving forwards. It will not preclude industries capitalising on it. What it will do is it will end the harm on the people that are being harmed the most. You, me, those around us. So please, April 20, find out where your local event is. If it's not local, travel. If there's enough people around you, create one. Five days is not much time, but there's enough time to send a call out and say, hey, who wants to gather together in a park and ask for the end of prohibition? Let's come together and speak with one voice. Have a little puff at 420. Send it streaming to the world. Show that all the way around the world we are one people with one simple request. Please stop harming us. Please. Anyway, I'm Ancient Jay. Call me Ancient, call me Jay. Just don't call me late for dinner because that's the munchies. And that's sort of refueling. It's a sort of, it's a big part of that healing process. As your body's using the healing properties of cannabis, it's burning energy. What does your body do when it needs energy? It needs more fuel. What's fuel? Food. What's food? <gasps> munchies. See, there you go. There was always some science behind it. I'll catch you guys later on.